in that text of scripture, if you go back and look at that verse or verses, look at that passage, I want you to see that, put that verse back, that passage back there, that if you note that verse 21, because so often when we read the word of God, we perceive that the sequence that is listed in the text is the chronological order in which the text occurs. And so then for our understanding, I need you to see that uh, the verses 20 through 22 do not happen in that order. In fact, what really happens in the beginning, verse 21, the C portion says, seeing I have lost my children and am desolate, captive, removing to and fro. So what happens in the beginning is there is a loss. There's a loss of her children. Then what happens is that God steps in in verse 22 and says, because you've experienced loss, I will lift up my hand to the Gentiles and set up my standard to the people. And so then as a result of the loss, we find that God moves on her behalf. It's so important for you to see the sequence because you must understand that when you experience a difficult time, you can expect God to move on your behalf. Amen. And so when God moves, we find in verse 22 that he says that they shall bring thy sons in their arms and thy daughters shall be carried upon thy shoulders. In other words, we see that when God lifts up his hand and begins to move on her behalf, they see an influx of children and grandchildren. And so then here comes verse 21, where we go back and the mother says, Who hath brought these? Behold, I was left alone, and where had they been? And so then new children and their children show up. And then we find in verse 20 where those children, in conjunction with their grandchildren, say, Miss Tracy, this place is too straight for me. Give place to me that I may dwell. Because there were so many children and grandchildren that they needed more room. And so then I wanted you to understand the sequence of these events so that when you see the text that you would understand how God is going to bring an upgrade in your life. Because there first has to be a loss. Do I have anybody that qualifies for having experienced a loss? And so then in the fact or in lieu of the fact that we have experienced a loss and through this understanding that God will move when time elapses, our circumstances continue to scream in retaliation and remain an obstruction to our faith That's right. in other words man of God I am an individual who's experiencing a plethora of loss but yet, because of the continual expression of these circumstances, I find it difficult to believe that an upgrade is coming to me because my circumstances remain and they continue to fight against my faith and what I hear you say. I know you said that a divine upgrade is coming, but my circumstances continue to persist even when I leave from this place and I'm, I'm in a great state of mind, my spirit is high, but before I can make it home, the circumstances come and snatch away the joy. My faith in believing that divine upgrade is rightfully mine. And so then I'm in the midst of a struggle trying to see how is it possible for an upgrade to happen for an individual who is in a condition that has pertained or continued to exist for such a long time. How is it feasible for me who, who have done some things that God I know you would be proud of. How would I qualify as for an individual who would be destined to have this upgrade 
God. Yes. God, how is it feasible for this to happen when everything that I've done spiritually has not brought in my course mm -hmm. a change? Mm -hmm. And so then, here we are again telling you that divine upgrade is coming even in the midst of the loss that you're experiencing. Yeah. But saints of God, I need you to understand there's no need to exercise faith after you've come out. The purpose of your faith is while you're in the loss. The purpose of your faith is while your circumstances are persisting. The, the purpose of your faith is in the midst of what I'm facing. Even though what I'm looking at may be factual, it's not the truth. Oh God, help me right here because the truth that I need you to see this text here. Look in the Gospel of Matthew, the 13th chapter, verse 31, because I believe that today, that if you don't get it today, that if you don't grab hold today, that if you miss today, that you're going to be in a predicament that perhaps time has already acknowledged that you should not dwell in any longer. There is such a time and a place where you can stay somewhere too long. Go read it in Hosea. He talks about the son who stayed too long. Matthew the 13th chapter, verse 31, verse 32, and it reads, and another parable Jesus put forth unto them, saying, The kingdom of heaven is like a grain of mustard seed, which a man took, sown in his field, which indeed is the least of all seeds, but when it comes, or when it grows, it becomes the greatest among herbs, and then becomes a tree, so that the birds of the air come and lodge in the branches thereof. And so then I need you to see here, because some of us are still trying to see how is it that my circumstance is not indicative of my destination. It is because your current situation is a disguise. I want you to see that. It is disguise. The, your current outlook on your situation may not be anonymous to your future. It may not be reflective of where you're going. And so this is why some of us find it hard to believe that divine upgrade is coming to me because my current situation seems to be antagonistic to where you say I'm headed. And so what happens to the individual is that they begin to believe that their circumstances is indicative of their destiny. But I need you to look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, I don't look like where I'm headed. Mm. I need somebody to say that more time. Question may be asked, how does this little seed 
this mustard seed, the grain of a mustard seed, that the Bible says is the least of all seeds, is able to become not only great among the herbs, but to become a tree. Wait a minute now. First you tell me I'm the least, but I'm going to become the greatest. I wish I had somebody right there that could bear witness. Uh, see, we bear witness to the least, but I need somebody to grab hold to I'm still the greatest. Uh, there's still greatness in me. I, I may be the least among those on my job, but there's still greatness in me. I, I feel like I'm the least among the brethren, but I'm still headed to greatness. And so then there are three things I need you to see here that you will find synonymous and parallel to your situation. The first thing that we find that the seed has to go through a downfall. Mm. This is why the Bible says it is a seed which a man took and sowed in the ground. What? It had to fall from his hand into the ground. And so then a downfall is a collapse. It is a setback. It is distress. It is misfortune. It is disappointment. It is a traumatic event. It is a situation that has removed you from a place of peace to a place of pain. It is a time in which chaos has been released in your life. And so then when we find ourselves first experiencing a downfall. I, I look at you and say, I had always been like this. Uh, uh, there was a time in my life where I didn't have any struggles. There, there was a time in my life where I wasn't suspicious of you. Uh, there was a time in my life where I had my joy and my joy was full. Uh, there was a time when we got in the bed and you were on your side and I went on my side. Uh, there was a time when we got in the truck and you rode right next to me, but now you're Oh, I wish I could talk to some real folk in the house. Uh, I ain't always looking 
like this lately. It ain't always been like this. It ain't always was suspicious and skeptical of people. I ain't always been pessimistic. I used to be a time in my life when I believed in the goodness of man. But now I look at folk Pastor Mac and I'm wondering what's in it for them. I just wish I had some real folk to talk to me in the house that you can look at your life Somebody in the house who, who will go high. Huh? Look at your neighbor and say, 
The seed, the Bible says the man sows it into the ground, which means it has to fall out of his hand into the ground. And so before any seed can grow, it must first fall into the earth. Wow. I need you to get that real. Yeah, yeah. See, some of us have prayed, God, I want to grow, I want to increase. Woo. Then you got to go into the ground. You got to experience a fall. Except we experience a downfall. Except we, we go through a time of discomfort. Except we be in a position where it seems like all hope is lost. Except we go to a point in a time when the tranquility that used to exist in my mind seems to have forgotten its destination and its place of residence. And so then except I experience, except I am sold into the ground. So then I can't experience. You can't experience the upgrade. Except the situation that you're in exists. Okay? That's why we say the situation draws God to you. The second reason why the upgrade is going to happen to you is because of divine intervention. Now what? Divine intervention is a miracle, an act of God that causes something good to happen that wasn't supposed to happen. All right. All right. I'm going to slow it down one more time. A miracle. Divine intervention is a miracle. It's an act of God, a move of God, a way of God. That God causes something to happen in your life that wasn't supposed to happen. Turn the coin over, Pam. Then what a miracle or divine intervention is, it is an act of God that then stops something bad that was happening in your life. Jesus. So divine intervention can cause something good to happen. Divine intervention can cause something bad to stop. Thank you, God. So mind you, the woman had lost. She lost the children. So she had been experiencing loss. So divine intervention comes in to make something good happen out of something bad. And then causes what's bad to happen to stop happening. Are you hearing what I'm saying? And so then, divine intervention happens in this, with the seed. It says that it is the least of all seeds. But when it is grown. So then, there has to be some divine intervention for it to go from least to greatest. Yes. Yes. This is why John said it like this in the Gospel of John, the 12th chapter, around verse 24. He said, except the grain of wheat fall into the ground. And die. It abides there alone. But if it dies, it'll bring forth fruit, much fruit. And so then watch this. Watch this, Abel. What? Isolation does not bring on restoration. Watch this. Isolation does not bring on elevation. You say, why are you saying that? It is because when we go through laws, we isolate ourselves under the notion that my isolation will bring on my restoration. Mm -hmm. So then we withdraw from God. We withdraw from church. Uh -huh. Thinking that isolation, this is what happens to the seed. Why it's in the, the farmer's hand is in isolation. Mm -hmm. So isolation won't bring on your growth. What isolation does is facilitate your degradation. In other words, isolation will perpetuate your demise. So then the seed never grows in isolation. It has to go into the ground. This is why I said, go back and listen to what he says. Look at the text. It says, in John, John, the 12th chapter, he says, except it fall into the ground and die, it abides alone. So in other words, it's abiding by itself unless it gets into the ground. Now wait a minute, wait a minute, look at your neighbor, say, wait a minute. It says that it abides alone. So that means, ladies and gentlemen, if it goes in the ground, it's not alone anymore. So who's in the ground with it? Oh my God. Yeah, I ain't ready. Because here's the thing that we think that our situation is designed to draw us away from God when in actuality is designed to draw us closer to God. 
But when our emotions speak louder than the Spirit of God in us, it draws us away from God. And so then, if the seed does not get into a place or a position or a state of loss, it merely remains in isolation. As long as the mustard seed stays in his hand, it's isolated. But when it goes into the ground, it's no longer alone. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? Why? Because in the ground, there's some stuff designed to help it grow. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Yes. Now, now Cassandra, in the ground, there's some stuff you can't see with the naked eye. Yes. But it's in the ground. Oh, my God. There's, the help that you're looking for is in the ground. It's in the place that you can't see with the naked eye. And so if you stay isolated, then you never get to the place where your help comes from. Watch. Because not only is there nutrients in the ground, but there's moisture in the ground. So that then when the seed that used to be by itself now gets into the ground, when it gets into a place of downfall, because make no mistake, saints of God, good God of my head, uh, when you get into the ground, you find that you are not the only one in the ground. Oh my God. This is why everybody was standing up in here, huh? because they were they testifying to the fact huh, that I experienced a downfall. So what you got a chance to witness is that there's other folks in the ground with you. Oh my God. But not only are they in the ground with you, huh, it's some stuff that you can't see with the naked eye that's going to create, watch this, germination. Oh, look at your neighbor tell me there's some stuff happening behind the scenes that you can't see that's going to take you from a place of isolation to a place of multiplication. This is why it says it does not only bring forth fruit, but it brings forth much fruit. And so that the seed, watch the saints of God, I need somebody to help me with this. Note that the seed it abides there, watch this in his hand alone. But when it falls into the ground, Lady Benton, and it gets around some nutrients, it gets around some water, then it goes through a process called germination. Watch. It is because the seed, although it looks dead, was never dead, just dormant. Yes, yes, sir. What are you saying, man? Your life may be in a place where it seems like nothing is happening. You're not dead. It's just dormant right now. But you need to understand that when the farmer sows the seed to Sean, he knows that the seed is already pregnant with possibility. Ooh. Okay, let me go back to Isaiah. We know that the woman gave birth to children, right? And it says that she lost all the children. So she had the capacity to give birth. Watch this. That's in the natural. But now she had got to a place where she could no longer give birth in the natural. And so then God sends some supernatural children. In other words, watch this. She begins to give birth even in her state of desolation. She begins to give birth even though she's in a place of isolation. How, man of God, can I give birth in a place of isolation? It is because divine intervention steps in the ground with you. And so that although you may look dead, you're only dormant. This is why the Bible says in the book of Isaiah, the 54th chapter, that the children of the desolate woman are more than the children of the married. Well, how is it possible that a desolate person can bring forth more children? It is because they are pregnant with possibilities. And when that possibility comes in the realm of the miraculous, then what you see is a move of God. And so this is why saints of God, you're wondering how a divine upgrade is going to come. It is because you're still seated with the possibilities. You're still pregnant with possibilities. You may be dormant, you may be inactive, you may be immobile right now, but you still have to understand that I'm pregnant with possibilities. And so I'm going through this downfall because 
dead. You just don't. You just don't. You just don't. And so this is why this is why he says he got to fall into the ground because it's only the ground that has the right atmosphere. Watch this. The ground is the only thing that's conducive for miracles to show up. For what are you saying, man of God? That you have to be in the right place. You got to be in the right position. You got to be connected to the right people. Because if you're connected to the right people and you're in the right place and you're in the right position, then God's intervention, this is why God told you, be still. Because if you stay in the ground, then you'll be in the right place. You'll be connected to the right people. You'll be in the right position. So that then intervention can show up. So that all And I'm moving. 